Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News as Harrison Ford continues the strange new chapter in his career. Yes, it was announced yesterday by none other than Sylvester Stallone that while he was losing Willis for The Expendables 3, he was gaining Harrison Ford. Now, I don't know about you, but I just really can't not see a film in theaters that stars both Nicolas Cage and Harrison Ford. That's like an amazing team-up of like my favorite action heroes. Uh, and I think it's really impressive uh, the way Sylvester Stallone is kind of... Uh, upgrading his franchise, and maybe not upgrading is the right word, but reimagining it, giving it new life. Uh, you know, I think like for the first two films he very much went with kind of like a um, 80s vibe, even like somewhat like a late 70s vibe, you know, really Stallone's contemporaries. And it had kind of like a biker gang feel, which was great, it worked for the property, but I think it had a very specific feel that, you know, wasn't as inclusive as perhaps I think this new direction might be. Now, of course, when they just brought on Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Cage loves motorcycles. He's Ghost Rider. And in real life, he's like, I think, I think he's like that too. So that wasn't quite uh, moving in that direction. But I think with the addition of Harrison Ford, uh, Jackie Chan will also be in this film, and Mila Jovovich, uh, I think that you're, you're going a little bit more towards the mainstream. I mean, Jackie Chan has a very different vibe than Jet Li. Uh, so I just think it's really exciting. I can't wait to see. I hope that Harrison Ford has a big role. I mean, I loved what Chuck Norris did in the second Expendables, but I would like to see Harrison Ford do a little bit more here. Uh, I mean, you know what? I'm, I'm just glad that Harrison Ford seems to be slowly but surely waking up, or at least trying. Uh, I really liked him in 42. I thought he was fantastic. I'm a little iffy on how he looks in Ender's Game. I think in Paranoia, I don't know what he's doing, but he seems engaged. Uh, I think it's funny that he shaved his head for that role. I know it's totally not necessary, but, you know, Harrison Ford's concocting looks for his characters. That's great. Good for him. Uh, so I think this is an exciting choice. I think Harrison Ford really has nothing to lose at this point because, uh, you know, he, he came back as Indiana Jones. It was only received so, so. I mean, it did very well at the box office. I think he made, like, personally, like, 60 or something million off of that, uh, off of Indiana Jones 4. But, you know, obviously... As, as I said, Spielberg even admitted he coined a new term for jumping the shark. He replaced it with nuking the fridge. So he, he entered the lexicon there uh, with a pretty big mistake. But anyway, I'm excited. I will def if I, I was on the line about seeing The Expendables 3 in theaters before, I'd watch two at home and I found it much more enjoyable than seeing one in theaters. Uh, but with this kind of cast, how can I pass it up? All right, so another person uh, building his career but hasn't missed a beat is Leonardo DiCaprio. And it looks like he's finally going to get to play the Viking he's always wanted. Uh, it was announced yesterday that he is um, getting the rights, or Warner Brothers is buying the rights for a script for him called King Harold. Or uh, it's, spelled, it's spelled funny because it's a Viking. Uh, but, you know, DiCaprio, you know, obviously comes from that part of the world. He's always felt this would be a great role for him. Uh, he's saying that this is going to be his brave heart. Uh, and I think that, I don't know, I mean, Braveheart won a lot of Oscars for Mel Gibson, so maybe it will for DiCaprio. As we all know, he's trying so hard to get that Oscar, and he just cannot get it. I don't think this year is going to be his year either. I think there are just too many other strong contenders who are playing the Oscar game a little bit better. For instance, uh, Forrest Whitaker. I also think uh, um, Michael B. Jordan. And I'm sure, uh, also think uh, even Benedict Cumberbatch with, you know, Julian Assange, the, that role. They're disappearing more into their roles. So, uh, but I, I would definitely, would I see a Viking movie with Leonardo DiCaprio? For sure. I love Vikings. Uh, I, I've, I haven't watched the History Channel show because I feel, you know, I don't really, I, the clips were uninspiring to me. It seemed a little cheap. Uh, if, if anyone else is watching it, let me know. Am I making a mistake? Am I missing a, an awesome show? But I've mentioned it before on uh, a countdown for this channel. But if, any, if, I, if you haven't seen The Vikings with um, um, Kirk Douglas, Michael Douglas' father, and also Tony Curtis, go rent that movie. Excellent film. I'm a big fan of uh, that, uh, the, that film, and it made me actually have a, a kind of... I, I watched it when I was a kid. My parents rented it for me. And it's actually one of my mother's favorite films. And so uh, I've had a, a soft spot for Vikings ever since. So if they... That, that's a, obviously a very, like, uh, 1960s Technicolor Viking film. Very good. But if, you know, DiCaprio could make a really realistic, gritty uh, Viking film, like Game of Thrones style, I think that would be fantastic. All right, so the third story is something that I feel is important to talk about. The CNN, CNN, yes, CNN ran a great story yesterday, and they were saying, is this man uh, the, in the real inspiration for the Lone Ranger? And the reason that they were, there was a question about it is because apparently there was this, uh, and also there's a link to this, video, this article in the video description, because I think it's important to see. And uh, 
They said there's this guy named Bass Reeves, and he was a U.S. Marshal uh, a long time ago, and he was legendary. And But this is where it gets interesting. The man was an, uh, a former slave from Arkansas who, uh, who got away and became this legendary U.S. Marshal during that time period, the 1800s. And they said he arrested like over 3,000 people, was uh, a spectacular uh, detective, and he, re and he wore disguises, and he really was a legend of the West. And I believe there's a sculpture erected to him somewhere, but he, they said that history has largely forgotten uh, Bass Reeves, the legend of Bass Reeves, uh, like they do so many people who are, you know, white males. And, I, you know, look, I love white male heroes as much as the next person. I mean, they've done very well for the entertainment business. Uh, but I think that this is an unfortunate trend. Uh, and I've talked about white. Well, this is a problem with whitewashing before. You know, I might have, you might have remember that I talked about this with extraordinary measures, where they cast Harrison Ford uh, as a who uh, to, to play a guy in real life, a doctor who was Asian who came up with this cure. And it's 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 annoying because, and I said this, but I'll reiterate it here: by not having more diverse heroes, you really create the feeling that people, uh, that women and people of color, don't really do anything. They don't contribute to society. Uh, because there's no role models for you to draw from, you know, historically. And it just reminds me, someone else told me that, you know, a lot of women have invented things throughout history, but nobody knows about it because a long time ago, women couldn't get patents. So they had to have men that they knew felt the patents, and then the man got all the credit. So it's just, it's frustrating, you know, and I think Hollywood has an obligation uh, when they see a great story like this, not to, not to whitewash it, but to tell the real story. Because I think this, you know, Bass Reeves should be an inspiration to a lot of people that even in a particularly difficult, you know, environment, you know, when there was racism, uh, and to show that racism wasn't as prevalent, obviously, in the West, the Wild West, because look at what he was able to achieve after escaping from Arkansas. I mean, I just think that's really fascinating. And, you know, not to take anything away from the Lone Ranger, I don't know if Bass Reeves inspired it. I'm not saying we changed the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, he's established, he's great, good for him. But I think that I would definitely, if I was a development executive in Hollywood, I would be fast-tracking a Bass Reeves movie, or at least heavily looking into it. I think it's a great idea, and I think Hollywood should, has a, uh, as I said, has an obligation to search out these heroes that history has forgotten, uh, and and bring them up so that all people feel that, that, that you know that they have role models and people to who to inspire them, and that everybody can contribute to the larger picture. Uh, it's not as hopeless as I think. It's actually, that's, it's great. It's not hopeless. It, you know, and I, I, I really like everything to be on an equal playing ground. I think everyone should be judged personally by their, what the, who they are and their accomplishments and what they, what their, it's in their heart. Uh, and, um, you know, Hollywood, I think, is a big influence on those kind of decisions uh, of how people regard other people and the world. All right, so that's today's morning movie news. I hope you'll read that article. And I also, also hope you'll check out my YouTube Geek Week videos. I have three. Two of them debuted today. One is an interview with uh, David Steinberger. He is the CEO and co-founder of Comixology. So you can learn all about what's happening there, where they, you can get digital comics and how that revolution is working. And also an interview with Scott Lobdell. He is a major writer for DC Comics. He used to write for the X-Men uh, back in the day. And now he writes Superman, and he talks about uh, also his controversial uh, reworking of Starfire for the new 52 and what he has planned for DC Villains Month. So you can check out those videos right now.